Any other questions about race and ethnicity? Okay. Next, we're going to talk about age groups. And I think looking forward, what's going to happen in our region in the next 10 years, this may be the most important part of the presentation. Because I think it tells us some opportunities that the area is going to have in the next 10 years, but it also talks about some of the challenges that the area is going to have over the next 10 years. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay. This is a breakdown of all the age groups here. And what stands out the most? I'm hearing two different answers. And, and that's okay. First part of the answer is this guy right here. A 53% increase in the 60 to 64 group. Who is that? Retirees. Retirees and baby boomers. Now, I'm not going to ask anybody what their age is. Wise but, but everybody knows who they are in the audience and what their age is. <laughs> but yes, this is, this is clearly that baby boomer wave. And it's individuals that were born between uh, 1945 and around 1960 or so. And they're just now getting into their 60s. Some of them have just started to retire. If you look at our area, the, if you look at the top of the wave of the baby boomers, they are around 60. They're either side of 60 right now. So they're going to, of course, be approaching 65 and past 65 in the next 10 years. Notice I didn't say they were going to retire in the next 10 years. It's just that they're getting to get closer to 70. Some will retire, some won't. Uh, I look at this, and you kind of see this, these others too, this 30% in the 50 to 55, and a 29% 65 to 74 as a business opportunity. What are the needs of this group? You know, it impacts local governments because of social services, public health, but there's also some business opportunities there. Think about what are the needs of this group going to be? What are, what are they going to want in terms of amenities and quality of life? So there is going to be a demand there. Now, of course, this is nationwide. If you looked at other metro areas throughout the state in the United States, you would see a very similar pattern. We'll, we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. The other trend, and this is the one that troubles me. However, I can say I'm no longer in this group because I'm getting older. I'm actually in this group. But 25 to 34. That's a 18.6 percent reduction. What does that mean? That means one out of five people that are between 25 and 34 that were here in 2000 are gone. And of course, some of them aged into that next group, like, like myself. But that 35 to 44, it's declined too. That's, that's a red flag because that's the future that you're looking at in the area. One out of five young people gone, that's, that's not good. And that's, that's something to think about. I think that's a challenge for the region going forward is you want to, you want to serve this group and look at it as a business opportunity, but at the same time, you want to try to reverse that. Because it, where is the area going to be 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, if we continue to lose population in that group? And that 15.4% gain is probably going to migrate out of here and join that negative number, the 15 to 19 year olds. Right. So that's, that's another question. What happens to this 15 to 19? Are they going to stay in the area? Are they going to go to college and university, not come back because of opportunities? Are they going to go to a community college or one of the local university programs in our area, ASU, Hickory, Burke, Caldwell, find, find a good job with skills? What's going to happen to that group going forward? And you'll see even the under five and five to nine, you see a reduction there, a slight reduction. Now that's going to vary by county, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But again, to me, that's an indicator. If this group has dropped, 
that group should drop because that's a lot of your childbearing years. So you would expect that to drop a little bit plus fewer, uh, fewer children per household. So that would be a factor as well. We just tell the news like it is. This is always the part where I feel like I'm going to get shot by the audience <laughs> at the time of the news. But, but we just tell it like it is. Uh, Taylor, you said that the uh, baby boomer demographic is probably consistent in other areas. What about the, the younger demographic? Is that more exclusive to our area, or is that something that you see in other areas as well? We're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about is this baby boomer profile in our area the same or different than other areas? Here's the number breakdown so you can uh, actually see the numbers. Here's the 25 to 34. So we had 50,000 in 2000. We now have 40,000 in 2010. That's a loss of over 9,000 25 to 34 year olds. In contrast, the 60 to 64 group. Again, this is only four years versus nine, or five years versus nine or 10. 24,000 to 31. So that is that crest, or I'm sorry, I was the wrong one. 15 to 23, I'll go 50% increase. So you can see that baby boomer wave. And then you can see the, the loss of that uh, 25 to 34. And to a lesser extent, the 35 to 44. Okay, Here, this is your question that you had, the, how does it compare to other areas? Okay. Several of the metro areas had a loss in this group. However, our area had the largest loss in this group, 18.6. Goldsboro was close to the 16% loss. Uh, let's talk about the ones that increase. And you'll see, of course, Raleigh pops up again. 37% increase. What's going on in Raleigh with younger people? Yeah. Right. Students going to college. Jobs. They're going where the jobs are, which makes sense. Uh, Wilmington, 23%. What's going on there? Again, it's jobs. It, it's, it's jobs. And uh, you asked a question earlier about age by ethnic types. I think that's part of what's driving this. Because <laughs> we have younger students that are working in some of these areas to take service and construction jobs. You don't see as much of that here. Uh, let's see, uh, Jacksonville, 22%. What's going on there? Military. Military, that's right. Military base, saw some growth. You're going to have younger people there, probably a lot of younger Hispanics. That's going to make that number jump up. So but that, that, then how would you explain Fayetteville? Fayetteville, see, it doesn't always work that way, though. You're right. It down 10%. So what happened there? Even though the military went up, a lot of them have gone overseas. Military went up, but I claim if you take the military out of it, you had an exodus. So when you look at the two, the exodus of non-military exceeded military growth, and you end up with a 10% loss. It's also, Taylor, it's because they've gone overseas for these wars, and their family members have gone back to their hometown, so that'll cause a lot of that emigration out there. And I think the other thing too, Fayetteville's a larger metro. Jacksonville's just one county, so the military has a bigger influence on the economy than the Fayetteville metro area. So that's another part of it too. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about that? Again, to me, this is a red flag. That is not the direction that you want to go in. Let's look at the flip side. Again, we'll talk about the baby boomers here. And you look at our increase, 53%. That's kind of middle of the road. It's, it's a little bit towards the lower end, but there's several metro areas that are, are a little bit lower than us. Why is that? 
probably because we've gotten some, besides the baby boomer wave, we have had some in-migration of retirees into the region, and it's just enough to bump us ahead of a couple others that haven't seen as much of that. <coughs> uh, again, probably shows up a lot more, but 163% increase. So their baby boomer population has more than doubled. It's, it's a huge increase. Wilmington was the second highest. It nearly doubled. Again, baby boomers plus retirees. And if you get a huge influx of that, you're going to see uh, larger growth rates. So looking at this chart, we were fairly in line with most metro areas. A little bit less than a couple, but fairly in line. Any questions about that? All right, now we're going to look at the individual counties. And the reason why I created these slides, each county has a little different set of circumstances going on. And sometimes if you look at a regional number, it doesn't tell the whole story. So for the age group, since I felt this was important, I decided to show you each county. So if we start with Alexander, some trends you're going to see in all the charts. This, again, is 60 to 64. They had a 63% a increase. Their 25 to 34 was only down 12, which isn't great, but it's not terrible. Of course, they're a very small county, so a few hundred here or there can influence their percentages. Uh, their school age, it generally went up, but the under five is down. Okay, so that's Alexander. Now your job is to keep all this in mind because there's going to be a quiz at the end. <laughs> all right. Uh, Burke County. Take a look at this 25 to 34 here. 22% loss. So that's, that's approaching one out of four. It's no wonder that their overall population growth was only 2%. If you're losing one out of four people in their 20s and 30s, that's going to Im impact your growth rate. Uh, the other thing, again, we have this 15 to 19 group, so it'll be interesting to see where they go. But look at the others. They all have losses. And the 5 to 9 has a 12% loss. So what does that tell me? Well, one, it definitely shows that their school enrollment has dropped in Burke County. It has to, looking at those numbers. It also tells a little bit about who is left. It looks like it was maybe some families with some children under 15 that left. Uh, they also had a pretty big loss in this 35 to 44 group. That was one out of eight. That's pretty significant. Uh, even this baby boomer group, see it only grew 44%, which is still a lot, but it's not in the 60s like you saw in Alexander County. So Burke County has definitely suffered some losses. It's really tough when we go to Burke County and we have to, have to share it, but we've been sharing with all four counties. Uh, Caldwell County, again, 22.5 percent. It's the same percentage loss that Burke had. That's huge. Again, that's one in four. Now the school age, it seems to have impacted under 10, but the 10 and the 15 to 19 is up. So that's probably their enrollment's probably slowly dropped. So uh, 60 to 64, again 46 percent increase. So again, if, you, if you're losing one out of four younger people, it's going to be hard to get a really fast growth rate. And their growth rate was 6% overall. That's why. 